Today on Dub World, I'm posting a little bit different kind of video. This is an epic frustration video. Actually, it's a failed video project that I decided to share with you anyways. So this whole project involved removing and replacing the front windshield on my 69 Beetle. What I thought would be a relatively easy experience turned into be one amazing debacle of problems. But after thinking about it for a while, I said, you know, I should share this video with all of you. Maybe there'll be some takeaways from it, some things you can learn from, mistakes to avoid, and maybe some tips and tricks you didn't know. Either way, are you ready for this adventure? If so, sit back and let's go. So before you get ready to remove your windshield, I just want to caution you that the front windshield glass is the most fragile glass on your car. So you definitely want to be patient in the process. The best way to avoid possible breakage is to cut the windshield seal and slowly push the glass out of the car. You can cut on the outside around the edge, but if you have the chrome trim in, I would definitely recommend cutting from the inside and I'll be showing you that here in the video in just a moment. First thing you need to do is remove your windshield wiper arms. And if you're on an early model car, it's just, just a flathead screw underneath here. Just an arm up under the screw. Later model Beetles 70 and later have a nut right here. It just pops off. The reason I'm changing the seal in this car is because of this. If it'll focus in, there's a gap underneath the edge of the window seal. This is actually on both sides. It does not fit well at all, and it's allowing water to leak into the car. So I've got a brand new West Coast metric seal that I'm going to install, and hopefully that'll take care of our leak. I like to use one of these beauties right here. It's a carpet knife, super sharp, very versatile. Um, use it for just about everything. That's what I'm gonna use to cut out the seal. Of course, you want to remove the mirror, which just turns. Those turns pop out. There we go. Okay, so the windshield seal on this car had been replaced. I don't know how long ago. The rubber is still kind of soft. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut from the inside here and peel the rubber away. Um, I've got this plastic tool here. I'm just going to cut the seal. You want to be careful doing this. You don't want to cut your dashboard. You don't want to cut through to your paint. Um, if you damage the paint, you're going to need to touch it up. Otherwise, you're going to invite rust down in here. Okay. So see what I'm doing here? My goal is to peel this away completely. I'm just going to cut in through here. And then peel this rubber. Wanted to show you here the goal with cutting the rubber and pulling the rubber. Really, it's just a matter of being able to get this blade in here. Putting tension on the seal and just cutting it. And if you keep running a good cut, this should peel fairly easily. So that's what I'll be doing around the glass. Okay, so we've got all the rubber cut out. Now it's just a matter of gently pushing the windshield out. All right, so we have the glass out. Now it's time to clean up underneath here. and to make sure you don't have any rust going on. Get it prepped for the new glass. Also a good time to clean up inside here. Clean your whole dash, whatever you need to do. Looks like on this side we got a little bit of surface rust here, which I will clean and treat and touch up. 
it's a good time when you're cleaning this um, area for your windshield reinstall is to get your little vent cleaned in here which I'm using a brush and some 409 cleaner just spraying it in just ever so lightly I don't want to flood it in there I'm just taking the brush and scrubbing it in here the corners trying to get as much as I can some of this will be seen from outside the car so you know right there might as well detail it up and also if you've got a metal dash like this car it's a good opportunity to clean and detail the top of the dash in the vents I'm also using this little plastic uh, crevice or actually it's a interior trim tool to kind of get down in here and clean as well you can see we're much better than we were before nice and clean and I'm gonna go through and uh, make sure any areas that could possibly need some touch-up are done before I reinstall this seal it looks great under here no rust holes uh, beautiful something you don't see very often on Beetle especially if the headliner has been replaced uh, this one's original with these little retaining clips at the corner of the headliner um, this car has one on the passenger side only driver's side's not there but then again the uh, window rubber has been changed because the car has been painted before but just a little interesting tidbit that Volkswagen installed quick side note here you may be looking at the video wondering are those holes in there yes those are actual drain holes from the factory um, it's really made to relieve any moisture that may get under the window rubber the goal here is to have the seal completely fit flush against the body so that no water gets in here but if water does get in here you want it to exit out and hopefully dry drip or two doesn't cause any problems fortunately with this car the seal was completely lifted up so it was literally pouring water into the trunk area which I had a towel in there to capture the water um, but yeah if you Get standing water under here this is when you get rust and that's typically what you see on cars that have been sitting for a long time and the seals are gone well I thought I was recording but I wasn't so I was showing you how to gently pry this rubber seal off the windshield I want to keep it as straight as possible it's gonna make it much easier to install that aluminum trim on your new seal. The stuff you see on me is the lamination from between the glass. So all US Volkswagens have safety glass. I don't know if you can see this through here, but there's two sheets of glass with a plastic in between. And I'm wondering if the possibility of this laminate kind of oozing out was never trimmed properly. Maybe that's why the seal didn't fit the best in the corner. So I've just gone through and I've trimmed all the excess, laminate off, get ready to reinstall the rubber seal. So you basically just want to gently lift as you go around. You don't want to bend this. You want to keep it as properly shaped as possible. Just go around the entire seal. Getting this aluminum trim in can be very tricky and can get you really frustrated. So I wanted to show you on video how this actually fits in here. So this would actually be the bottom of the windshield, just to give you some perspective. But you see how this trim fits in there, just goes in that groove. Just pops right on out like that it goes in like that I wanted to show you here is when you get ready to reinstall everything you want to make sure the window seal there is a seam where the window rubber is put together you want that to be in the middle you can see in here this one's not quite in the middle it's close but you can line that up with the trim and you'll be good to go makes it look much nicer now I'm going to be installing a West Coast metric window seal that's the one that's over here with my thumb. I'm pushing down on the edge. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but this is a little bit thicker than the one that was on here. And this one, see, not much of a lip on it. But this was allowing water to get underneath the glass. 
Of course, I cut the inside channel off so you can't see that here. So we are now at the point of installing the seal on the glass. When you do that, you want to make sure you don't put any type of lubricant in the seal or the windshield. You want it to be able to bite and stay on the glass, which is the problem I ran into here. The seal was really tight and every time I went to put it on the glass, I kept popping off. I thought I was filming the process, but the camera wasn't filming. I never hit record. I guess I hit stop and that was that. So I was frustrated with the seal, decided not to record because I needed to get it done. And when you set up to record, it really takes a lot of extra time. So I installed the chrome trim and this is where I made a big mistake. I sprayed some lubricant into the groove for the chrome trim. And that lubricant got on the windshield and got between the seal and the glass and made the rubber seal pop off once again. So I had to take everything apart and clean it. And I can't tell you how many times I had to reinstall the seal and reinstall the chrome. And reinstalling that chrome trim is not fun. And it's not easy. I wish I could have showed you the way to do it and make it a much faster job. But again, I stopped recording. The seal kept popping off. Even with me taping it onto the windshield, I ultimately had to call my wife to help me so I could get four hands on it instead of just two. And between the two of us, we were able to get the glass into the car and I got it installed. And it sealed just the way I needed to seal. So I was very happy with the rubber from West Coast Metric. The only thing that I wasn't happy with was the final installation left the bottom corners not quite even as you can see here. If you look in the front, the outer rubber is sitting a little bit lower than the inner rubber. When you see that, you know the seal is not exactly set correctly. But since I installed the windshield in the dark, I wasn't going to worry about it. But that's the end of my windshield frustration video. In the end, I consider it a win because I was able to remove and install the glass without breaking it and I solved the water leak problem. So you can see through all that frustration, there was reward. Thank you so much everyone who tuned in and stayed to the end of the video. I really appreciate your support. Please comment below and let me know your own personal experiences with installing VW Glass. Were you frustrated? Was it easy? Let me know. I'll be seeing you again soon on Dub World.